well. Okay. So, um, all the findings were suggestive of mitral stenosis. Apex beat was in fifth space, instrument was loud, opening snap was present, and intastinal grounding. On echocardiography in the um, our ECG and chest X ray were within normal limits. And uh, in trans thoracic echo in the pastoral long axis, we got an enlarged left atrium. Uh, LP size was, no was normal with good systolic function. And a mitral valve leaflets were thickened. There was diastolic doming of the anterior mitral leaflet. PML was fixed, and there was uh, and there was thickening of the cordy. Uh, all were suggestive of rheumatic mitral stenosis. Then, with color flow, um, we got um, uh, the stenotic flow across the mitral valve. As you can see, there was a stenotic flow across the mitral valve, and the aortic valve was normal. Then in apical four chamber view, um, <coughs> I got a flow uh, which was suggestive of a rheumatic mitral valve stenosis. And the LV size was normal with no regional wall motion abnormality. And the CW do Doppler across the mitral valve gave us a gradient of five millimeter of mercury, which was mean gradient. And mitral valve area was 1.2 square centimeter. She had a very trivial tricuspid valve regurgitation. Uh, as you can see here, very trivial uh, tear with a tear gradient of 17 millimeter of mercury. Till now, this was a case of rheumatic mitral stenosis with a valve area of 1.2 and no pH. But as I started looking at the tear, I got some abnormal flows in the interventricular septum, the flows are suggestive of myocardial collateral flow. Why a patient of rheumatic mitral stenosis should have these abnormal myocardial collateral flows? And again, when I looked at the color flow across the uh, RV outflow tract, I could see an abnormal flow in the main pulmonary artery before its bifurcation. So what it can be? Is it a coronary cameral fistula? So I started looking at the coronary arteries. Now in the parasternal short axis view at the level of the great vessels where we look for the coronary arteries, we couldn't see the origin of the left coronary artery. On the other hand, I got a very dilated right coronary artery. As you can see, the right coronary artery was so much dilated that just by tilting the probe in the parasternal long axis, I could see a dilated right coronary artery. So where is the left coronary artery? Now I went to, um, again, the parasternal views and started uh, you know, looking for the left coronary artery in the modified views. This is a high parasternal view where I have opened the main pulmonary artery in its long axis. As you can see, this is the pulmonary valve. This is aorta. And uh, to my surprise, I saw that left coronary artery was in fact arising from the pulmonary artery. And soon after its origin, it was dividing into LAD and LCX. And um, uh, the LAD, LCX, along with the left main were dilated. And with the color flow, I could see a blue flow in the LAD and a red flow at the site of insertion of the left main and a red flow in the LCX which is just the reverse of normal flow pattern in the uh, left coronary artery system. As you can see in the LAD, normally we get a red flow and a blue flow in the LCX. Whereas here we got a blue flow in the LAD and a red flow in the LCX. So this is a case of biochocardiography. I diagnosed this as a case of uh, L-kappa along with rheumatic mitral stenosis with valve area of 1.2 without any pH. To confirm the diagnosis, a coronary angiogram was done where uh, the left coronary artery could not be located in any of the coronary sinuses of Valsalva. Whereas a uh, selective right coronary angiogram revealed a single large tortuous right coronary artery, as you can see, and multiple collaterals, intercoronary 
collaterals, uh, which were uh, moving over the RV surface, interventricular septum, and the apex, and they were uh, they were uh, connected to the left coronary artery, which was draining into the pulmonary artery. So. A diagnosis of alcopa or anomalous origin of left coronary artery from pulmonary artery was diagnosed, which is a very rare congenital anomaly occurring only in one in three lakhs live birth, and only 10 to 15 percent of these cases reach the adulthood. And uh, the clinical expression of alcopa begins after the birth with the morphological and functional changes take, uh, which take place in the pulmonary circulation. After birth, till the age of four to six weeks, we know that pulmonary arterial pressure remains high. So the left coronary artery receives the blood from the pulmonary artery. Though it is unsaturated, desaturated, but still there is some blood in the left coronary artery. Uh, LV with its high demand of oxygen still suffers from ischemia, but left coronary artery at least receives some blood. But after six weeks, as there is fall of pulmonary arterial pressure, if there is no collateral, the left coronary artery system neither receives blood from the pulmonary artery nor from the right coronary artery, and death occurs. If there are formation of collaterals, survival is possible. Now, uh, if, even if there, there are collaterals, uh, there, is, uh, there is a phenomenon called uh, pulmonary coronary steel. You see, the left coronary artery is connected to the low pressure pulmonary artery. So the collaterals, collateral flow tends to go to the low pressure pulmonary artery rather than high resistance myocardial uh, vessels. So that results in pulmonary coronary still with left to right shunt. The volume of shunt is small in relation in terms of cardiac output, but it is quite large in terms of uh, the coronary uh, flow reserve. So as a result of which there is myocardial ischemia, LV dysfunction, and even sudden cardiac death. In spite of various types of insults the heart is facing, the 15% of the patients still can sustain the myocardial function at rest as well as with exercise, and they reach the adulthood. The diagnosis of Alcapa is, is a very, very difficult when especially the patient presents in adulthood. Usually the patients of Alcapa present in infancy or early childhood with congestive heart failure. And while doing echo, we get certain indirect echocardiographic clues like LV systolic dysfunction, regional wall motion abnormality like we get in myocardial infarction uh, due to uh, the infarction of the LAD territory and bright papillary muscles due to scarring or mitral regurgitation. Well, in adulthood, we get only few signs like dilated right coronary artery, which we got in this case, uh, which is a sign of extensive collateralization between right coronary artery system and the left coronary artery system along with myocardial collaterals in the IVS. We had both these echocardiographic clues in uh, my patient. So these are the indirect ecocytes. With these signs, once we suspect, we should immediately go for detailed imaging of coronary artery to confirm the diagnosis. So uh, to conclude, I would say this is my best case because this is the rarest of the rare combination of congenital heart disease and acute heart disease in an adult. And moreover, Alcapa is a, is a very, very rare congenital anomaly with serious negative uh, consequences. If I would have missed Alcapa in this case, as happens um, frequently with the echocardiography, uh, this girl would have developed myocardial ischemia, MI, or sudden cardiac death in near future, which we could stop with immediate surgical intervention, and we save the patient. Thank you.